Today I'd like to continue our series on Advent. We've been looking at different Advent readings to see what those readings uh, tell us about this special time in the church's year where we kind of prepare our hearts to receive more the bounty, the goodness of Jesus. One of the big feasts that we celebrate during Advent is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Uh, that special celebration of Mary, Mary's freedom from original sin, and the idea of God's grace being so wonderful, so amazing, that God gifted Mary right from the very moment of her conception with all freedom from sin, so that Mary could receive more fully the, the good news of Jesus and become more fully a disciple of Jesus with nothing in her way, nothing to hold her back. Uh, and the reading I'd like to share is a reading from morning prayer uh, for that feast. And it's taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. And I think it tells us a lot about Mary, but also about ourselves as we journey during Advent. And it's from the 61st chapter of Isaiah, uh, that section of Isaiah that we call Third Isaiah, towards the end of the book of the prophet. And Isaiah says, I will rejoice heartily in the Lord. My being exults in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and wrapped me in a robe of justice. Like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, as the earth brings forth its shoots and a garden makes its seed spring up. So will the Lord God make justice spring up and praise before all the nations. This wonderful reading tells us a lot about Mary and about ourselves. Uh, it talks initially about rejoicing heartily. So it is a good time, Advent, a time of good news, a time of rejoicing. And certainly, this great feast of the Immaculate Conception is a feast where we rejoice heartily in the good news of God's grace for Mary and Mary's wonderful choice, wonderful role, uh, wonderful discipleship in terms of Mary saying yes to God. And all of this, why? Because of God's grace, God's offering to Mary, God's generosity. So we rejoice heartily. It's a full rejoicing. It's a no holding back rejoicing. It's like <laughs> pulling out all the stops rejoicing. We're going to rejoice heartily. We're going to rejoice fully. We're going to give ourselves fully to this joy, this good news. So hold nothing back. Advent is a time to rejoice heartily in this good news that is coming to us, that is with us, that is present in our lives. And then uh, the prophet speaks about, after this rejoicing, says, My being exults in my God, my whole being, my whole self. It just exults. It's like I'm coming out of myself. I'm so happy. I'm so full of joy. I'm so excited about this good news. I have to rejoice, and I just have to exult. And it's not just kind of a small part of me that's exulting. It's my whole being. It's completely exulting in this good news, in what happened to Mary, in what happens to us, in this gift of God's grace, in this gift of Jesus to us. And then uh, it talks about the clothing, and it says, He has clothed me with garments of salvation. Imagine being clothed with garments of salvation. Certainly Mary was clothed with that garment of salvation as she gave birth to Jesus and she had Jesus growing within her as she followed Jesus in her life and as she was with the apostles as the Holy Spirit came to them. She was part of this whole mystery of salvation so completely and so intimately. But imagine ourselves. Imagine how we are clothed likewise with the garment <coughs> of salvation. We have been given these special garments to wear, the garments of God's grace, 
the garments of God's love, of God's care for us, the garments of faith. And you think of this, the, being clothed with the garments of salvation, kind of imagine yourself going into a department store, like say, like Kohl's, and saying, you know, uh, do you have any garments of salvation <laughs> to clothe me in? You know, it's kind of an unusual uh, idea, right, to be clothed in these garments of salvation. And we spend a lot of time clothing ourselves in various garments, don't we? We shop, we want to get the right clothes, we want to look the right way. When you think about it, all of those clothes, all of those fashions, beautiful as they are and wonderful, they're kind of transitory. But the garments of salvation are garments forever. They're garments that God gives to us because God loves us completely. And so he came to save us, the root of salvation to be healthy, the salus to be healthy, to be healthy with God, to be healthy with our sisters and brothers in community, to share that health, to share that love, to share that caring for one another. And those are the garments of salvation that we are clothed with. And then after those garments of salvation are clothed around us, God comes to us and says, <clears throat> I will wrap you in a robe of justice. So our call <clears throat> with these garments is to do what? To be people of justice, to be wrapped in these robes of justice. We want to spread fairness. We want to spread equity. We want to make sure everyone is treated in the right way. We want to make sure there is no discrimination, no prejudice, no hatred. We want to accept others, and we want to spread that joy, that exultation that we feel. We want to share it with all people. It's not something we keep to ourselves. It's something we share with others. So we are wrapped in a robe of justice. And that certainly was Mary's role. She was wrapped in the robe of justice of helping the apostles of helping the early disciples to spread the good news and to make sure that everyone, especially those who were on the margins, those who were the lepers, the outcasts, that they were included as well. And basically when we're wrapped in this robe of justice, we are protected and we are surrounded and we are engulfed with the justice of God the spirit of love, the spirit of fairness, the spirit of treating all with respect because of their dignity as persons. And then we read that the people who are followers of the Lord will be like those who are adorned with a diadem, that are special, and that their role will be to make justice spring up, which reminds us, of course, of the Magnificat of Mary's response to raise up the lowly, to feed the hungry with good things, while the rich are sent away empty and the mighty are cast down from their thrones. Mary has been chosen, and we too are chosen. We're chosen through our baptism. We're chosen by God to follow the Lord completely. And especially in this Advent season, to give ourselves more and more to God. So let us pray now that this God of joy, this God of justice, will come to us and fill us and help us to share the love of God with everyone. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of Mary in our lives. We thank you for her example, for her faithfulness, for her dedication, and for the justice that she brings to all of us. Help us to follow her example and to embrace you completely as you wrap us with the mantle of justice. Help us to wrap each person we meet with that mantle of justice. And we ask this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Have a wonderful Advent. God bless.